Hello there, my name is Doc Conrad, and this is my little preamble to the podcast. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who is a part of this podcast, including all the guests and the two wonderful artists who helped bring this podcast to life. At Meloscav, at M-E-L-O-S-C-A-V, create the icon for this podcast, and at Doidaflower, at D-O-I-D-U-H. F-L-O-W-E-R is the artist behind the visuals on YouTube and other social media sites. If you'd like to keep up to date with the show, follow the show on Twitter at Comms Open Podcast. For this first episode, I interviewed my good friend Andromeda Snow, or Kay. The style of this show has changed since the first episode, where I don't talk about individual pieces of artwork anymore, but all of that comes with learning something new like this. Personally, I'm a little nervous for the first few episodes of this podcast, but I hope you all still enjoy the show. Thank you, and have a great day. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, everybody listening, and welcome to Commissions Open, a podcast all about art in the digital age. Here you'll hear the processes, stories, and lives of artists, voice actors, video creators, editors, musicians, and many other talented creators in the era of online work. I am your host, Doc Conrad. Hello, Kay, otherwise known Hello. as... Andromeda Hello. Snow, doing the uh, doing the official title. How the, are, uh, the full thing, uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> I'm putting ever I'm putting everything out there. Thank you for doing with this me doing this with me not only once but twice. I do appreciate it. <laughs> it's I'm happy to I'm happy to do it. Let's I'm shoot for three to, times. Yeah. All right, three Let's times. <laughs> <laughs> Third times a charm. Ah, uh, okay. So let's go ahead and get into everything. Um, Kay, I love your work, and I already gushed about it previously a lot. Um, you <laughs> yeah. mostly go ahead and do work involved with um, digital art. Mm -hmm. You've done a lot of work involved with uh, the EVE Online community, as well as other video game communities. You have had um, previous uh, experience doing not only uh, emote work, but also doing work for uh, banners, uh, logos, uh, not banners, mostly logos and mostly, uh, different art pieces. Mostly, and um, some of these are very highly detailed. Yeah, I say mostly um, logos, like mm. badges and sort of logos. Yes. That, that very, um, like, self-contained kind of thing, style. Yeah. I've seen that a lot <laughs> with your... Um, no, no, I feel that. You, you've, you've got... You have... You have a lot of work involved with like um, Eve on Live, ba Eve Online badges, and doing things of that nature. But let's we're going we're jumping too far ahead. We we're going back to our Getting old conversation that we had before yesterday. Uh, <laughs> why don't we go ahead and start way back from the beginning? Um, how was it that you got into uh, art as a as a whole? As a um, whole, from uh, the very yeah. beginning. Yeah, we'll go um, ahead. You know what? Coming out. Coming out your uh, coming out your mother, you start drawing. What you do? <laughs> it came Go out on, the drawing. Drawing Mozart. <laughs> <laughs> drawing Mozart. Oh, that's my favorite line. Um, good. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, when I was very very young, I had those um, those like notebooks full of little like doodles and comics and things things that you draw as a kid. You'd try to do like comic panels. You'd like grid out the whole notebook page and just kind of draw stuff in each panel and just kind of like let your imagination go wild mm -hmm. and um I, something i never really got to go ahead and hear more about what is it that, what was what were some of your favorite things you used to draw um and the only reason why you, i'm asking this is because i had um a thing where i i like tried to draw comics poorly mm -hmm. um but i was like oh these are funny and nobody nobody uh laughed at them yeah, because they were so yeah, poorly it drawn was, like entirely self-contained like you loved it personally and everybody else yeah. is like that's great, son. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to it's pin big, it up on the fridge? <laughs> it's a big, it's a big moon. But um, no, what was it? What was it? The the early stuff that you doodled. Like I'd love to hear wow. more about that. A lot of the the very early stuff is um. I was I was super into like uh, medieval history when I was very young, and so it was a lot of that like swords and castles and knights and all that, all that Ooh. all that all that jazz. You uh you play that tower defense game or whatever that that like crash the castle game that you like 
that browser game on awesomegames.com did you like watch that did you like play I probably that? did like, at <gasps> some point probably um not not at that time definitely <laughs> that was that was before the time of uh, at least before my time of uh, online gaming as it were but mm. i um i did have um age of empires which kind of just Ooh. fed the fascination with medieval uh sort of history in that that time period i guess so that's they kind of fed into each other i would draw and then i would play the game and then i would like <laughs> draw more I love and that. i would i would draw up uh i would i would try to draw up little like city plans for how i would like build out my city in age of empires <laughs> uh the joys of being a child <laughs> <laughs> no no that's um I love that. I appreciate you sharing that. What? Uh, so after you got did a lot of that that basic like sketching and doodling, but what was the thing you were like? Oh yeah, I I'm like I want to go ahead and pursue art. Like I want to go ahead and have that be the thing where I'm like I want that to be my good. That's what I'm good at. I. It it would definitely be that. Um, I did a like I took my um, box art. Like this was a couple of years after, of course. I was in I think like middle school at the time. I took a a box art of Metroid Prime Two, which was still is one of my favorite games, and um, I just kind of drew it by eye. I drew Samus in her power suit armor, and um, I was just really satisfied with how it turned out. Especially, I'd surprised myself because I had kind of drawn it out by eye, and I had just kind of taken the time to do it because I felt like it. And that is still a very vivid memory for me because that, I guess, was the first time that I kind of pursued that, and I was like, "Hey, I could do this." Hmm. And of course, that was you know just kind of drawing a character with like a direct reference, <laughs> but um, hmm. it it blossomed into something more clearly. And, and um, I don't want to go ahead and like draw connections from from there to there, but like the, I'm guessing there was a lot of like tedium in there, and there's a lot of your art that has like very specific like, very complex uh, things involved with like details, especially some of the. Uh, go ahead and pull this up here real quick. Uh, some of these specific like pieces of art that you have are like really com really detailed and complex and like some of them are involved like galaxies and you've also got like you've also had your love of like space uh, for quite a while your whole name's themed around it uh -huh. and, also got you in, and also got you into uh, i'm guessing eve oh yeah um, um sci-fi was definitely a big interest um especially going into digital art sci-fi was kind of a big influence kind of that the genre in general and mm. a lot of um a lot of games that i've played have kind of fed into that and a lot of media that i've consumed have kept that interest going and that is of course what led me to eve and what led me to uh i guess refining my um refining my work even more and you know, deciding to put more more practice into presenting art. <laughs> mm -hmm. You've um, yeah, you a lot of your themes around have been around um around space, and you've also have uh your your Destiny two uh picture of your um your Woken Hunter uh, with all the little red leaves. I want to bring that up because uh I was there when you made that, um, and <laughs> yeah, and yeah. your and you, I believe you were either in the Discord call. Or you were talking, um, you were typing. A little bit of it might have been both. I would definitely I was in the I was in the voice channel for sure. We were all hanging out, and I was kind of just like loudly working on it. <laughs> I I found that to be really fun, and you also had the um, the great experience of uh, I had the great experience of hearing you complain about all the leaves. Yeah, just grumbling and mumbling about. <laughs> it was like. <laughs> It was just tedium and you know like it wasn't it wasn't bad to actually go in and do it it was just tedium and i was just kind of like grumbling for the sake of grumbling about it <laughs> yeah. 
I um yeah I, I definitely think that it was totally worth it at the very end mm -hmm. uh, because all of those uh, from from like the fi the finished product it looks amazing and adds a lot to the a lot adds a lot of like personality to the image itself mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the background as well you like let us you let us choose the color for the background <laughs> for that image too that was my favorite thing I love oh. I love doing that when I'm indecisive about anything um, mm -hmm. for some reason especially with my art. I like to do it, but whenever I'm indecisive about anything, I like to pose like a totally unrelated question to my friends. I'd be like, "Hey, you know, um, a left or right, you know, up or down," <laughs> and whatever they <laughs> whatever they answer is what I go with. When at least when I'm indecisive and I just can't pick between one thing or the other, I'll get someone yeah, else's I input. I remember you that one specifically. You just said um, you 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 gave us that option initially, and then you were like, and then we both like pressed on to be like, what does it mean? We're not answering unless you tell me. <laughs> we're not telling. And then eventually you showed it, and we were like, mm -hmm. gave the actual input, and we and I feel like the, and I and I love the image for that. Just cause I don't know, it's just because I felt like like oh yeah, I made that too. You have, like, <laughs> yeah, you have small that. Brain. Um, you have that connection to it in a way. You kind yeah. of bring, you bring your friends together in a way. It's real, like, yeah, eh, especially with the whole uh, memory part of it. Um, but yeah. there is, uh, I don't know, there, there is a lot of your work that is um, not only dedicated to um, your specific, like, artistic style of a lot of different details and um, a lot of uh, space theme, um, which I love. You, uh, you've drew, for instance, the, the galaxies... I've seen like there's the galaxy drawing that you have, which uh, looks fantastic. I have no idea how you did it, and um, the um... I don't know either. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I blacked out one evening, and when I woke up the next morning, that was uh, that was on my monitor. It was on my PC, <laughs> and I don't know, I don't I don't know how, who did it or who possessed my body and did that, but <laughs> you felt you felt it was you. No, I um, I mean I I definitely did that. Um, <laughs> it was it was just that's kind of how it felt it was just very improv i was just like i kind of want to you know take this image like i just had an image of the andromeda galaxy as it were and i just kind of was like i want to screw around and see if i can do this and i mm -hmm. it turned out really surprisingly well and yeah. i was like holy <laughs> what <laughs> where did that come from sometimes you surprise yourself like that it's it's interesting a hundred percent. Now you, one of my, one of another one, one of my favorite uh, images of yours. That's also sort of like a, not so much a background, but mu much more of a like, a different piece in your character pieces that you've mm -hmm. done with like icons like Jin, uh, your Sekiro piece. Oh, are you looking um, through my uh, my Tumblr? Yeah, I'm looking well. through your Tumblr right okay. now. Right now. I was, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if you had that up, but I was gonna make sure you had that. So you had because I think there are a couple pieces there that I don't have on Twitter. Yeah. Um. I'll share a little mm. Growlithe. Just uh, a handful. That. Yeah, I love your little Growlithe as well. But I <laughs> want to talk about your, your big old spinny star. Um, big old spinny star. Wait, which one? In 2017, uh, I posted that. And um, the little like light refractions and everything, you did you Oh, did really right. On that um, big old spinny star. That's, yeah. Um, so that was... That was uh, how did I? I don't. Know, I can't believe I did that in 2017 or whatever that was. That was. Um, I was playing a lot of um, Elite Dangerous at the time, which is like another space game, and more more sci-fi, more uh, more of that. And mm -hmm. that's kind of their. Um, it's that's um, inspired by their their um, representation of neutron stars, and so I it, it would just. The way that they present it in that game struck me, and I would just felt the need to paint one of my own, and so I, that's kind of I went in and did that, <laughs> <laughs> and it turned out again really, really beautifully. I say even you know how many years now? Three years later, four years it's, later. It's it's almost three, yeah. Uh, it's gonna come up on three. Did your brain just break with how far away that is? Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I can't believe I did that in 2017. That's mm -hmm. some of these are like old, 
and I, mm-hmm. I'm like surprised at how how old they are now. <laughs> I'm getting old. Nah, man, you're fine. You're fine. You're so, you're you got the best. You got the best years of your life out of you. You had, you went through high school. Like you lived through that. Like you're fine. <laughs> I li- speaking. <laughs> I was alive through that. <laughs> yeah, same. But this actually brings up an important part. Uh, your digital work. You started. Um. You you were mostly did like the sketching uh, from that, and then you went into an art class and you moved on to digital yes, work. From um, um, talk, I want I want to talk about the process that you went from like just sketching to doing taking art seriously to digital art. Right. So, um, um, around the time that I did that, it was around like I guess middle school when I did that um, the Samus sketch doodle, and um, mm-hmm. I kind of surprised myself with that, and I guess I. I don't remember I don't remember very well, but I know that I doodled a couple of other things and I took an interest and then um when I went into high school they actually offered a decent amount of art classes and so I basically took art classes the entire time that I was in high school and uh that was where I I guess developed a further appreciation for art and developed my skill more. Because of course I took the um, like the art 101 class where you learn all of your like your color wheel and your proportions and all that fun stuff and um, we did a lot of life drawing and um, our art teacher was really great in the way that he taught his classes and I think that helped a lot too. Hmm. You um, <clears throat> you did a lot of different. Uh, I remember you you did you did a lot of different like artistic styles as well. Yes, um, our teacher would have us, um, at least for the, um, the Art 101 class, um, he would have us go through and we would have different projects for each, um, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have one us, like, one a quarter, it was, we had maybe a week or two on one project, we'd spend maybe a week on one, and each time it would be something different, we would do, like, um, Pick pick a partner in class, and you're gonna draw portraits of each other, or um, you're gonna practice human proportions. You're gonna do like this time. Maybe we'll do like a charcoal project, like a charcoal artwork. Um, go through kind of different, different. Um, how would how would I put it? Different. Um, you know, studying like proportions or studying um, color. Mm-hmm. Or even from that, even over to different mediums like charcoal or um, oil paints, things like that. And so he, just from that, um, pretty much all of us got a good taste for a lot of different mediums of art and kind of all of the basics. Okay. And um, I remember you also mentioning that there was one uh, a very important bit where you actually showcased your art yeah like yeah. publicly our um our teacher again he was great i don't think i could have asked for a better art, art teacher in high school he was um yeah he was really interested in having us take our art pieces to show if we um if we chose to do something like that and so a lot of us would take our projects that we did for class for a grade and we would put them up in different like local art shows or um shows between like different schools in the area and we would go to like competitions and shows and yeah and actually uh, one of my one of my pieces won i think it was a first place award no oh, wow. i still i still have the print of it sitting over there and i guess that's kind of a good segue into getting into um the digital art because i i <laughs> that was smooth i got into digital art um I think it was based like in my third year of high school. Um, our teachers all got tablets, iPads, or um, for like school use, I guess. And our art teacher mm-hmm. was just like, "If you guys need this for like references, reference images, or um, any anything art related, you're totally welcome." And um, he had a like an actual art program on there for drawing, and I took that up almost like really quickly I took that up and started playing with it 
and then that kind of grew and I submitted a couple projects for a grade um, by doing them up in that program and then we printed them off into big posters and um, one of those one of those posts one of those um, prints won an award at an art show and that was that was pretty cool <laughs> that felt really what, good what was what was the uh, art project about what, what was that one that you that won oh I don't know if I have it I don't know if I have the file anymore <laughs> mm. it was just this big um I just remember it it had like a flag in the center. It was kind of this another like kind of sort of like fantasy medieval themed piece and it had like a big styled flag in the middle and this painted like red sky with like an army below or something like that. And it was It was I was really proud of it at the time. I think at the at the time that I made it, I thought that was one of my best pieces that I'd made. And clearly other people did too. You got first place. Yeah, yeah, that's like <laughs> one good thing right after the other exactly um <clears throat> going on from digital work um i'd love to go ahead and talk more about uh what you do now because your transition from doing uh digital in high school was a lot of like uh doing your doing it off the ipad uh and stuff and stuff like that especially in um in class i'm guessing that he mm -hmm. had given you mm -hmm. uh, or at least let you borrow yeah, and that was even that was very different from what I do now because it was like um we didn't have like a pen. So it was just kind of like like finger painting. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Which was um that was fun. Um Yeah, how did, how is it that you got to uh your tablet now? Uh, did you I pretty much um I got it. I think it was like a a birthday gift from my parents around um it's around my my last year in high school i think is when i got it i think no that can't be right i don't i'm not good with dates <laughs> no, you're fine no you got so well, well it's more of important <clears throat> is that you after the after you got your ipad you got the tab you got a tablet i got my own i got my own like tablet used. i have a um yeah i have an intuos pen and touch and mm -hmm. i it's the same one that i still have today and i still make art with it and it's <laughs> it still serves me well it's still kicking hell yeah um, and so that um that was another change that took some getting used to because i i had gotten used to kind of the traditional methods of like pen and paper and um and then i had gotten used to doing stuff on the tablet just you know with with your fingers with a touch screen and then um I kind of had to go back to not only kind of the pen and paper style, but with this tablet. Um, it's not like a display tablet, so there was, of course, that whole thing to kind of get used to, which just wasn't wasn't a big deal. Mm. I don't even know why I yeah. mentioned that. <laughs> it's really not a big oh, deal. Oh, oh no, no. There's there's definitely some artists that have that issue, and they prefer to have the like the direct screen to screen. Like I know that I know that I wanted sister. I wanted a display tablet really bad. When I when I got this instead, but I was looking around and I saw the prices and I was like, "There's no way." Little high schooler me was like, "There is no way that I'm getting one of those." <laughs> my uh, my sister was the same way. Wanted to get a display tablet, but she got a uh, she got an ac she got one of the uh, the drawn on tablets. Mm -hmm. And I'm gu I'm guessing those are actually pretty better because like a, a display tablet itself is literally like a monitor mm -hmm. on a touch screen. Um, and yeah. those have a lot more moving parts than <laughs> yeah, they're, like an actual uh, tablet. I mean, just just the just the pen tablet is really simple. It works. Mm -hmm. um, mine has survived for many many years. And through those many many years, you've done a lot of different <laughs> pieces I've, of art. It's, I've gotten a lot of art out of it. Yeah, and I and I'd love to go ahead and talk about it because there is um, I don't know there is, you have a lot of different like. You have a lot of different like sets of pieces, and one of the most one of the most common ones you have is that of uh, Eve work. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a lot of different ones involved with uh, e Eve Online. Um, let's go ahead and talk about that. Like, what is uh, you started to go ahead and getting into Eve, mm -hmm. and you want to go ahead and like I'm guessing show some artistic uh, creation through that, and you just started making work on your own from then, or, um, or, or how did that come about? So from from um, 
when I first started playing Eve, and I was kind of browsing all of the like out of game forums, the um, the subreddit and the forums and all that. I immediately noticed that there were some people that um, were like specifically making Eve art. Even from from the get go of me first learning the game, I had noticed that, and I immediately took a liking to that because I was like, "Hey, that's something I could do. Like, I could make Eve art too. I could make like you know the 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 like the propaganda posters and like the mm-hmm. the commemorative artworks of like events that happen in game and all that fun stuff." Yeah, I think uh, I think it's important that I don't take that clip out of context of like, oh yeah, I had enjoyed looking at all the propaganda posters. <laughs> yeah, <But> no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Eve, you know, Eve propaganda, as, you know, as um, as serious as that could possibly be. <laughs> yeah, video game propaganda as serious as that could possibly be. My correct. fake spaceship group is better than your fake spaceship group. Haha, <laughs> 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 suck it. You're gonna start a war. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyway, yeah. You're um, so you're he- you're. I'm guessing you're heavily inspired by some of the like, I'm guessing the cult the the, I'm guessing the Eve art culture is that of like, very much showing uh, a pride inside of your own group, and um, showing that forward. Uh, what uh, what are some of the things that you've worked on involved with that? involved with the eve online yeah, uh, community um, there's like a lot of variants it's not just the like kind of um group pride posters and all that stuff um there are definitely a lot of people that just make art for the hell of it they'll draw like their favorite ship from the game or mm-hmm. just whatever they feel like but um a lot of my work is um even <laughs> You know, as I look back on it, a lot of my work isn't even sort of that that um, sort of propaganda style that kind of inspired me in the beginning. I do just a lot of um, badges and icons. Mm-hmm. That's kind of, I guess, what I gravitated towards. Yeah, you have your mm-hmm. um, you have different like badges for different events, and you have uh, badges for um, not only uh, events but for like the 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 anniversary of the game um some of the uh a badge for uh the battle of nine four uh let's go ahead and uh and and i and i love both these uh both these pieces of work artwork because you post at the same time not only that but you've got like um you've got like very you got like very uh direct detail into a lot of the different uh that's of one of the um uh, 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 in nine four especially. Um, why don't yeah. you go ahead and talk about that because you know a lot about this more than I do. Yeah, that one. Um, I made that badge, the uh, nine tac four badge nine dash four. Um, that was a very big like battle that happened, and it was one of the first large scale fights in Eve that I actually kind of actively paid attention to as a player and i was actively um watching how it would unfold with the um you know all the <laughs> all the capitals and everything being thrown at it and um <clears throat> so i felt i wanted to make like a badge to commemorate that cuz it was it was a large battle in and of itself but um it was also kind of just a personal thing for me cuz that was my mm-hmm. first um I wasn't particularly in that fight, but it was the first one that I was that I was watching as a player, and I was kind of starting to understand, you know, what's going on and you know what these ships are doing on on the on the grid and all that fun stuff. And you're um, this is a particularly like a was it like a French? Uh, yes, I believe it was a um, a French group. Or a, um, I think the, I think the station was actually called French Star or something like that, and that's mm. kind of what. Um, I don't, I don't remember exactly. I don't remember exactly. I remember. I, I just know that like, apparently the apparently France was very important because not only is it the color scheme of the flag in the right, background, right. but it's also the, got uh, the little beret. The beret. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. The cute little beret. I love it. It was. I think. Um, I think it was. I think that was just um, a center. 
I knew better at the time. I think it was just kind of a center for um, European time zone players. It was that kind of region. Okay. There were a lot of groups from the European time zone. And that's one of the things that's really interesting about EVE is that um, it's like single shard and you get people from like Europe and Australia and all over the place. And it's wild. It's all on the same server? Yes, it's all... Um, <laughs> Everything except for, I believe China has their own server. But other okay. than that, um, everything is on one server. That Single sense. shard. Okay. Um, okay, now it's time to go ahead and get into the tea. Because not only do I love this art piece, but I love the story that comes along with it. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> I want to I wanna get to spill this a second time. Okay. Art theft sucks. I want you to talk about <laughs> the, two, the two times it happened. We're going to preface first, this by the, saying... Art theft One sucks. <laughs> yeah. And the, I preface this by saying art theft sucks. Never do it. And if you do it, I will find you. But we will be ready to throw hands. Exactly. We stand uh, We stand artists who get their art stolen. We, pr we must protect. But protect. I, you're, you've gotten this piece stolen specifically twice, you've stated. Two separate times. I, yes. Yes. I want you to go ahead and talk about both of them for me. Um... Um, yeah, my experiences of art theft, I think, have been pretty tame compared to, I'm sure, stories that others have out there. I, I, I think I know for a fact there are worse stories of art theft out there, but mm -hmm. mine was just kind of in, it was just kind of uh, a situation where someone, I, I posted that piece to Reddit, to the, uh, to the EVE Online subreddit, and... It was just kind of a thing where s someone hit right-click save, you know, right-click save as, and put it in their own thing. And um, the first instance that I that I heard about, someone had brought to my attention that it was the piece was just straight up reposted on the subreddit, but someone had just kind of colored in flat black across kind of the, the lower half of the station and specifically mm -hmm. where my little watermark is. So they, they covered up my watermark and tried to post it as their own, but luckily uh, luckily someone brought it to my attention pretty quickly and I was able to have the, uh, the moderators take that down. So that one wasn't too bad. Um, my, the second thing that had happened was... Sorry, real quick, mm -hmm. I want to state... The whole point of this is that it is a French flag, and they got rid of the blue part of the flag so that way they could claim it as their own. I find that hilarious. The blue, <laughs> right, the blue part of the flag, and that's where my little like watermark yeah, is. Yeah, your watermark. My, um, my watermark back then was a little, a little different, and it was a little, <laughs> it was not mm -hmm. super great, I don't think. And I think I've, I think I've, uh, learned a few things since then mm -hmm. in terms of um, watermarking my work. And making it yes. a little more identifiable. Yeah. Now, uh, sorry, I was I interrupted. I just want to go ahead and talk about That's how okay. this guy literally just ripped off your work, but instead of like getting rid of the whole like French pride, uh, he got rid of the French pride thing entirely by getting rid of the blue part of the flag, um, just so that way he could t rip it as his own and not give you credit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I find that to be like, I don't know, hilariously stupid, but anyway. Uh, I mean, whatever. People. Sometimes people be like that, which sucks. They not only be but... like that, and it do, but it suck. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, that kind of got taken care of, and it it wasn't really harmful to begin with. Someone just kind of right-clicked save and tried to repost it. Yes. And it was just, like, but... some guy. It didn't it didn't really escalate into anything worse. We just, he like, just wanted... had it taken down, and it was done with. It was um, just a Reddit karma farmer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but... I want to hear about the second time because that's a lot more like the second thing depth. is a little more juice. <laughs> yeah, I love. Give me as much content um, as you give me, Kay. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Start beef. Let's go. So the second thing that happened was someone had again kind of right clicked saved, and luckily they didn't like edit anything out. They just kind of reused the image, but the issue kind of came when my watermark was so small you couldn't even see it and they didn't give me any credit, they um, started using that badge in their 
um, YouTube videos as kind of like a cover for their text channels because a lot of people will do that in I guess like the Eve uh, YouTube community or Twitch like streaming community they'll a lot of the time it's kind of just like a, a black box they put over their chat windows or whatever or sometimes they'll use like a little art piece or something or an image um, to cover up their text channels that they don't want people to see and uh, this person had I guess taken a liking to my art and used that and while I think that's really cool, and I'm like, what's what's the word? I'm uh, flattered. I'm flattered that someone would want to, <laughs> you know, use my work to do that. They never really like contacted me to ask permission, and they never gave me any credit in like their YouTube description or whatever. And so I, they. It was brought to my attention when they posted one of their videos to Reddit. And um, someone told me, like, hey, this person's using your uh, <laughs> your work. And um, oh. I got in contact with them. And I was like, hey, I'd appreciate it if you could uh, credit me, at least. Like, I don't mind you using my work, but at least, you know, give credit. Like, like you would credit, like, a musician if you were to use their song in your work, you know. It's the same same idea, same concept. Yeah, exactly. And um, if I remember correctly, they got back to me and they were like, oh yeah, sorry about that, so sorry. And um, they did edit in their description and uh, gave credit to me in that one video. And then I kind of checked back later and they had posted a couple more videos with the same piece and just didn't give credit again <laughs> like they just did it on that one video that i that i asked them about <laughs> but like at that point i wasn't super willing to chase it like it's mm -hmm. whatever it's not a huge deal and and i I've, I've 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 like said like i think it's more of a you don't mind when bad things happen to yourself but when it happens to a friend, you like stand up. You have to yeah, stand up for you're, them. Yeah, you're ready to throw hands. Like I'm ready to throw hands at <laughs> this guy. He stole your art, credited you once, kept on using it, but didn't credit you anymore, um, and probably totally forgot about the exchange in the first place. Probably, and got off, honestly, and, and probably just got off with it. And, and like that was it. That might be why they didn't credit me again, is because they just totally forgot, and like mm -hmm. didn't remember to do that. But I don't know. It's not super harmful. Um, I. I doubt they're making. <laughs> I doubt they're like making money off of their YouTube videos or like using my badge for uh, merch or whatever. Mm -hmm. So like it's it's not a very harmful situation, and that's why I'm that's why I'm so passive about it. I guess why I'm so um, relaxed about it and not trying to pursue them further and kind of jump down their throat, getting them to stop using my work because um, yeah, it's whatever. And it would be a totally different thing if they were trying to go ahead and use it as their own individual artwork, mm -hmm. or if they were like saying that this was their own, or they were trying to go ahead and use it as a design without commissioning you first. Yeah, that's, that's like, when it, like that's draws. a whole other can of worms. That's that's like, yeah. I think those are the real like meat and potatoes of the art theft stories and stuff like that. People stealing art, but my story is just kind of like a guy that probably just liked the piece hit right click save and was like this will look really good in, in my video yeah and it was just kind of you know not a malicious uh situation he was just like this is neat <laughs> yeah he, he probably didn't think too much about it and it's unfortunate really because a lot of um a lot of artists end up getting that sort of like their recognition that they could have gotten from like a big sort of like artist or, or from like some other sort of content creator mm -hmm. um just like snubbed underneath their nose without even being like paid for it so they didn't you although the image is like free to view whatever that's pretty cool but if they don't have any direct access to go and uh, like know who you were or anything like that and if somebody else really liked that image they couldn't go ahead and find you mm -hmm. um and or if it really stood out with that one specifically i mean it's not hard i have it on like a transparent background and like the watermark is very small and it is very easy to just kind of like right click save and you know mm -hmm. use it for yourself and whatever you feel like so i think i've at least when i post my art on um, social media i've i feel that i've gotten a little better at 
trying to prevent that a little bit from people being able to straight up right click save. Yeah. And I definitely think that adding a watermark is really important with that. Um, but that's pretty much all I want to go and talk about involved with the um, with the uh, art theft. Because it, it's it's an important story to go ahead and recognize and hear about. Um, and like you said, you're not like too miffed about it. But it's still like it's still an important thing to go ahead and learn that this is a mm -hmm. thing that happens. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a real world. thing. Yeah. Um, but this show is called Commissions Open. And I want to go ahead and talk about... Uh, specifically uh, commissions that you have done uh, in the past. I'd love to go in and hear about those. The main topic. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, I, we've, got, we've gotten around to your previous, like, your artistic uh, creations and all that, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but I'd love to go ahead and talk more about uh, your, like, commission process and how you've gotten about it, because yours, yours is very unique, um, where you don't exactly, like, market yourself online specifically, but you have a word of mouth sort of thing. Why don't you go ahead and talk a bit more about not only that, but the stuff you've worked on. Yeah. So it's sort of kind of word of mouth. It's, um, it's, I think it's mostly kind of situations where, um, I have a friend in the Eve community who, um, tends to kind of find himself in like an organizational role of organizing things like, um, helping organize things like tournaments or, um, other things like that. And when people are, in need of art he's like oh i know a guy and then he kind of is he's the bridge between the between me and the people who are interested in stuff like that and so um at least these days that's kind of where a lot of my commission work comes from is just mm -hmm. every once in a while someone pops up who needs a little bit of art and we'll kind of we'll chat and uh We'll communicate and get in touch and see how everything goes and that's yeah <laughs> that's how it all gets set up hmm. you've um you've all now, now to go from what you've what you've done let's go ahead and talk a bit about some of the specific commissions uh you've done um you've done uh like emotes and you've done different arts for like a discord server um, little things you've done for like, uh, like fan, like a little bit of fan art. And, um, you've also done the, uh, the, some, some different like logos as well. Why don't you go ahead and, um, I, I, I love, uh, the work you've done on, uh, red noise and zero talent. Let's go and start with early on your emotes. Um, your, uh, fuel block, those, your fuel uh, block. Emotes. Fuel blocks. So that was, um. That was like I guess the beginning of my Eve, um, my Eve life. It was when I was very first starting the game. I joined a little, little group called the Living Breathing Fuel Blocks, and kind of ended up in an artist role in their kind of group, which was weird to me at the time because um, I had kind of gone through like a lapse in me doing any kind of artwork at all, and I wasn't super confident in my ability to draw at all. Like, I wasn't confident in my ability to draw just for my own personal pleasure, and definitely not so for, like, a professional commission. Or, you mm -hmm. know, with the expectation of somebody else, you know, wanting a decent product. So, I was surprised to find myself in that position, and surprised that, you know, people were, <laughs> were pretty satisfied with the stuff that I did, and so I ended up doing... A lot of emotes for their um, Discord server that they kind of kept all their uh, all their communications on, and uh, a couple of other like poster pieces are in there that I did for them that they that they put up on um, like Reddit and things like that for recruitment and visibility and stuff like that. Which is, I guess, uh, moving forward is what the what the schoolhouse piece would be. That was that was kind of um, a piece where they were marketing themselves more towards new players, and they were like, "We want like a the uh, the guy in charge is like, we want a um, kind of like a schoolhouse piece, like a you know, like you're teaching the new players how to how to do things and helping them out." And so that's that's uh, <laughs> that's where that came from. And so you can kind of see in that where uh, oh, hello, kitty. 
All right, all right. Oh. What are you doing? <laughs> Hold on. I'm sorry. No, I love this. This is the kind of candid moments we need on commission film. What are you? Do <laughs> what are you doing? Why are you trying to get in through the? He's trying to climb up on my lap through the arm of the chair instead of like the smart way. Come here, kitty. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. Um, Am I still no, okay? Am I not too far away from the microphone or anything? No, you're good. You're okay. good. Okay. Yeah, I I I love your schoolhouse block piece specifically. And you were um, you were talking about how like that was your recruitment process for like that was like your art recruitment piece for getting new players into the group. Yeah, that was that was the idea of it. Um, mm -hmm. I guess not so much specifically for recruiting people, but that was like um, somebody put that up on Reddit, kind of as that was the idea of like we're we're like here for new players, want to help you learn the game. All that fun mm -hmm. stuff. I love I, I I love the cute little art style you did, and especially, um, I've noticed that in your uh, your redesigning uh, of the little helper series, uh, you also used your little your the little fuel block as your icon for like this is me. Hey. Yeah, yeah, that was um that was kind of the thing at the time. It's got it's got the uh, <laughs> the little tablet pen. Um, oh. I didn't even I didn't recognize that. Yeah, it's oh, um, like there's a, there's a slightly clearer version in the uh, in the kind of uh, emotes uh, collage that I put up at the top. There's a clearer version of mm -hmm. the one with the tablet pen. That was I, I mean at the time, um, I figured that was probably going to be a long term thing, and so I started I used that about a grand total of like one time I think, <laughs> mm -hmm. as like a little thing for like hey this is me. And then, uh, pretty much soon after that, the uh, the group kind of fell through the floor, and oh. they they all broke up. We, me and my group of friends that I was playing with, just left, and we went back to kind of doing our own thing. So, um, more about like uh, your little helpers piece as well, like your little drones. You said that mm -hmm. this was my by uh, somebody else. There's there's an interesting story behind this that I didn't even realize. I want you to go ahead and talk about that. Um, yeah, that was um, so. That was originally somebody else's piece. Um, they were pretty um, uh, well known, I guess. Is that the right way to put it? They were um, they were very regularly posting their own art on the uh, Eve subreddit. They would post a lot of uh, post-it note pieces. And there were just kind of these little, um, like these cute little post-it note doodles that um, actually kind of turned out to look really good. Despite, you know, what you would think of when you hear post-it note doodle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they, they were surprisingly good. And I think them being on a post-it note kind of added that extra little flair, extra little bit of uh, uniqueness. If that's the yeah. right word, and so um, yeah. they had posted these on Reddit. They had a bunch of different ones of these these drones, and um, with their permission, of course, I actually did my own little kind of digital rendition of their little of their drone characters, and it was cute. Mm. I love them. I really do. <laughs> They're just so cute. <laughs> um, They're just flying around in space. They're just out here. Yeah. Uh. Okay. So we've already discussed uh, the Keepstar, um, Keepstar fight. Um, mm -hmm. You want you had your uh, your Eve Online fifteenth birthday badge uh, that you 15th did, birthday. which which happy fifteenth birthday, which looks <laughs> rad yeah, as hell. Yeah. Um, that is, um, I kind of just so on. I think it was on Eve's fifteenth fifteenth uh, birthday. They added a new ship called the Praxis, and that like big, like star-looking ring in that badge is actually the is on that uh, ship that they added. So that would kind of sort of be the front profile of that ship, and I just I it caught my eye so much that I felt like I had to do a little thing for it, and I kind of did it up as a logo. 
Hmm. It it I I don't know. I just I just really like the 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 detail of it, and I love the uh, the number along with it. And mm -hmm. yeah, that was I think um, that was one of the first ones where I really tried to go in and get a lot of um, smaller details in, and I feel that that really helps to add to the overall look of it. So, I know <laughs> I'm sorry a little if that bit of the story. Nowhere. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm. I just didn't. I just didn't know the realize the story. No, don't, 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 don't ever worry about I'm it. I'm sorry in advance if this no, cat is nowhere. Like <laughs> going, <laughs> going wild. He just does that. No, you're fine. <laughs> I'm just a little tired. It's all. It's like one in the morning for yeah, me. Yeah, just, it's yeah. It's late. We kind of <laughs> we fucked yeah, around we started, a little bit. We did just a little, but oh well. Um, red is. noise. Red noise. I want to go ahead and just. I want to discuss about discuss red noise because um, your this was supposed to be uh, an alliance that you were going to be a part of, but it fell through. And along the podcast way, I got the genuine reaction to me realizing that that is a waveform for the <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. for the center bit, even though I had that as my uh, phone uh, <laughs> my phone background. It's probably why I liked it so much as well. Because not only is it like, uh, oh, it's, it's a cool, that, it's a cool little, story, uh, got that and little audio tie-in. Yeah, yeah, it's got a little audio tie-in. Um, but no, I just, just go ahead and tell me everything about that piece because I love it. Yeah. So, um, the the um, the guy that I am now um, friends with that kind of throws me work every now and again. Um, he was actually helping to organize this alliance, and he was kind of in like a leadership role and him and one other person were looking for an alliance logo to apply into the game you can send the developers like a custom art piece or logo that you design for your alliance and they will apply it in game and so you see it like on your character sheet you'll see that badge under uh, which alliance you're in on like structures that you own it'll have that that icon that logo and so that was like that was a huge jump from what I had done before because that was that was like <laughs> that was like a bucket list like having an icon in the game to uh, stand the test of time and potentially still be in game many many years later like like some some uh, alliance logos are and it, looking back on it it kind of seems silly but like at the time, that felt like a huge jump in, like, responsibility and pressure. Because I went from just doing, you know, like, doodles and posters and stuff to, hey, we want you to make our Alliance logo. This is mm. going to represent us and our entire group potentially for years to come. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's, it is, like, a big, uh, it is a big deal, and I'm sad that it, like, all fell through. Yeah, in the um, end, Because I'd love to go and have that be, like, an official piece of artwork that you would have done and, like, put in to the, yeah, that would have been into yeah, the game. that would have been really cool. Um, in the end, mm. it, um, the alliance didn't quite work out, and it was just before we had sent in the logo to apply mm -hmm. in-game as well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that, that happens. Um, the actual process of making it was pretty pretty um pleasant um it was better than i expected and it was a pretty good situation it turned out really well yeah it didn't um, oh, it was i totally forgot they, yeah uh, you, you yeah you they, they just basically that? didn't yeah didn't yeah didn't they just go ahead and say do what you want yeah it could have been a recipe for disaster they came to me and um they were kind of just like um, we don't particularly have an idea for what we want. We just know that we want a logo. Um, just go ahead and spitball, and we'll see where it goes from there. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I I um I spitballed a, just a bunch of really, really, really basic ideas. And um, we narrowed it down and narrowed it down, and we kind of came out to two that I had refined further. And then in the end, we chose the butterfly, and I worked on that for a little more. And that is what came of it. And I'm still really happy with the result. I wish that the Alliance could have kept going. Because I was, even 
from a personal perspective, I was very interested to, you know, keep playing with those guys. Yeah, yeah. And of course, it would have been awesome to have the <laughs> the logo. <laughs> you see that? See the fuck? You see the uh, the butterfly everywhere? Oh yeah. I sometimes, definitely. Uh, uh, sometimes it happens like that. Not only does it be like that, but it but do. it do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've um no that 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 story honestly while while it does break my heart it does show that like god you you went through like possibly the some artists like worst nightmare clients yes, and just like rolled with it i've um i've heard horror stories of like nightmare clients that are like oh just just draw whatever <laughs> oh yeah but there's uh yeah. that i mean that turned out really well um the guys are really good to work with i think what helped was that um one of them i am just friends with <laughs> and we are still i think we are still um, at least decent friends so mm -hmm. that probably helped that we could kind of go back and forth and just chat about it yeah it, it's um it turned out really well yeah it, it, it's a big difference between getting commissions from like friends who you know you want to go ahead and like i wouldn't say that like commissioning between like friends versus like actual clients is all about um how like the difference in quality of work, but definitely the communication between uh, those between those two is a lot different. Uh, between if you were just getting a commission from just like a random stranger on the internet, yeah, compared to getting some from getting one from like a friend. Like yeah, if I were to go ahead and commission you, it would be a lot different than if you were to get commission from some guy online. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think that just comes down to like. Um, talking to like random strangers from the internet versus someone that you know and that you've kind of spent some time with and you can mm. for us like commissioning a friend you know um it's probably easier to click and kind of get into the groove of things with a friend because you have more context of like who they are and you can can uh I don't know. I lost my train of thought there, but <laughs> no, like, no, no, like, I, I, what you, you do is good. Mean. Like, you, you, you know a lot more about. Not only do you know a lot more about the artist itself, if you were to go ahead and commission an artist of like a friend. Yeah, you know each other um, on like a personal level, and so you kind of know yeah. each other's like conversational tics and kind of each other's sense of humor. Yeah, and so you can kind of like. You can vibe a little more. You can. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot easier to gel, especially with like, especially with like some sort of something with like. High, more high stress with like uh, money and people having expectations for things. It's a lot easier when you know at the end of the day, like this is this is somebody who like cares about you, as opposed yeah. to a client who like doesn't want to go ahead and have that. And there there's there's some pros and cons there. There's definitely a, there's definitely a moral to that story. Um, but the big, I think the big idea is that if you were to go ahead and commission, if you were to go ahead and like get somebody to commission you, you'd want to go ahead and be someone who is like friendly and kind and wants to be your friend um and wants to go ahead and have it be more of that uh more of that than having it just yeah. be like a cold sort of like transaction um sometimes it's fine yeah. but mm -hmm. a lot of like especially for like individual commission pieces i think it helps a lot more if it were to be like somebody you know yeah um yeah. and i've definitely like um you definitely don't have to be friends with people to have like a good commission experience you can definitely yeah. um you can definitely have that positive uh, positive outcome. Um, mm -hmm. It's a good segue into the next badge if you wanted to talk about Zero Talent because that was yes. one where that was, I think, the first time that um, my friend had come to me and said, hey, are you interested in uh, doing a little bit of badge work? Um, this guy needs a badge for, um, for a tournament for his team. And that was how i felt at first i was worried because this is just like a stranger like i don't know how to i don't know how to vibe with them i don't know like mm -hmm. what their sense of humor is but um it turned out okay and um mm -hmm. we kind of we got off on um how would i put that <laughs> we um we kind of got in the swing of things really easily and it was yeah. uh I'm I'm really losing it right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. We got Go in the swing of things really easily, and it it was very easy for us to kind of click a little bit, and 
we understood, um, at least I understood kind of what he was saying with um, what he wanted, and he came to me with kind of a general idea of like a theme that he wanted for the badge, which was just kind of this yeah. like ice winter theme. And uh, we went from there, and it he was uh, satisfied with the product. Yeah, it looks great. I've uh, I didn't even realize I didn't I'd even recognize beforehand uh, that that piece uh, I didn't realize that you had you didn't post it really much anywhere else so I just didn't rec I just didn't realize that you had made it. Um, um, yeah, that one I didn't um, particularly post around on like social media and stuff. I think that was I think even before I met you guys is when I made that piece. But uh, hmm. yeah, some uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> my my social media presence is pretty uh, pretty bad. I don't post a, a whole lot. Um, it's time for you to get that uptick, baby. Yeah, get you yeah. get you some get that you some new swing. followers because a lot of more people need to see this art because it is fucking beautiful. Um, <laughs> I try, <laughs> and I you try. succeed. Get wrecked. Anyway. Sorry, sometimes sometimes a lot of my friends have like that self doubting sort of like thing and I just oh, yeah. need to like absolutely crush it. I am just like no am don't doubt yourself. I'm constantly like that. And that's why I need to like defeat defeat that. I need to <laughs> overpower it with like overwhelming amounts of love and it's why I'm so glad you're here for like delight so I can like literally uh, it, this is this this podcast is not only something that I've wanted to do for a while, where it's like showcasing other people's artwork and talking more about the industry and um, that I'm a part of, and at least in the freelance industry and commissioning work, um, involved with a ton of different things like art and like voice acting and stuff. But being able to showcase other people's like work that you uh, believe in and that you've always wanted to go ahead and share with other people is a great experience and i think is one that is well deserved for everybody that shows up on the show i'm i'm showing off i'm showing off the artists that i personally enjoy and believe deserve to have a spotlight poured onto them including some of the ones coming up in the future and some of them are relatively small some of them might be even uh, larger than like ones i would normally expect but you're you're one of the examples of like I want to go ahead and have you be shown to multiple new different people and be recognized as like a, a, as a wonderful artist that can grow. And I'd love for, I'd love for that to go and happen. I appreciate that. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. I like that. Hell yeah! That's this. That's the show. Is this show is just just good vibes all around. Just a wholesome um, wholesome show about art. Yeah, that's 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 my main goal. Um, but it's also to go ahead and talk a little bit about um. The commissioning process and a lot of uh, different things you've like experienced within um, that, and I, I think that my m this part has become a lot more like preachy, um, but I think it's important to go ahead and note that um, the commissioning process is a very tricky one as well. Uh, you've you and, and it's also a unique experience for a lot of different people because it's 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 two people inside of an it's two different people who who wants who want one thing which is hopefully the product to turn out well and also like require like the service to go ahead and be made for instance payment um and your you initially had like your payment system was a lot different than like a lot of different artists yeah um i think that um that choice that i made early on to um that that choice that I made early on was a good thing for me personally because of course I had a, like a lot of anxiety going in. I didn't mm -hmm. feel like I would be able to provide like a professional product, and I of course learned that I can absolutely. <laughs> I've I've gotten a lot of practice out of it, and I've gotten a lot of um, experience out of it. But um, mm -hmm. when I started doing uh, work in Eve. I actually chose to mostly take uh, payment in just the in-game currency of ISK, mm -hmm. and it's um it's kind of comes out. I've I've pretty much deliberately made my rates so it comes out to be about the same as if I were to commission someone for real U.S. dollars. It's just mm -hmm. in in ISK, and you can kind of do that. You can make you can do that math because of the way that Eve works. It has um, it has an item called Plex that you can use to um, 
to uh, buy like cosmetic items on the uh, on their in-game shop. It's it's like a premium mm -hmm. currency, I guess. Yeah. I don't see. I'm scared to go into this because like I don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> no, no, you're. I want to get it wrong. No. What, but, what's what's um, most important is that like instead of taking with, instead with, of taking like the, um, regular USD. Right. I'm I'm not like um. It's not like it's not like a real money transaction or anything. It's like um, just with the way that um, things work out, you can kind of do the math and figure like this much plex is uh, this many US dollars, and then yeah. that plex is also able to be sold on the in-game market for ISK and traded around. And um, so you can kind of do the math and say uh, this much US dollars is this much plex, which is this much ISK, yeah. and you can do that that kind of flow to get where you are. And so that's kind of how I did um my pricings i would just say oh this much this much x isk mm -hmm. and that kind of helped me justify it to myself because like it's kind of you know sort of the same value but like i can only spend it in this <laughs> in this online spaceship game <laughs> um but yeah i would definitely never um get into that hole because there's there's a hole it's um not good to do uh uh real money trading like trading um trading isk yeah. for real money like yeah, at, like, like actual company. real money where you you know send someone in-game stuff and they pay you real money for it but mm -hmm. i think this is okay because um i was um it's like out of game right yeah it's yeah. like an artwork that i'm just doing for someone yeah i i I think while it was it was fine, I definitely think that it shows. Um, I I think it I, I think it was a good stepping stone. It was especially right. for like per, a personal <laughs> choice. You would you would never personally recommend like oh yeah just do it in ISK. No, definitely. Like you would you never know, you know keep it. It was it was just a good choice for me because it was a good stepping stone for me to um, kind of find my place and get comfortable with the the process and learn uh just through experience how it goes and um you know what kind of different clients will usually come in mm. because at that point that i started taking commissions through eve um i had zero experience taking commission at all <laughs> so it's been good it's been and that's why that's why i don't immediately just outright say it's bad because it's mm -hmm. it's been a good like learning ground to get to get, to gain experience for uh, yeah doing proper commissions if I choose to do that mm -hmm. in the future yeah and I definitely think you can open up yourself to uh, further commissions you have a you have a very highly detailed um, mindset so I think um, pricing yourself higher while getting uh, fewer commissions where you can focus on them and like um, I remember you mentioning this actually. Uh, you want to, if you were to go ahead and do commissions, you'd probably do it in a block format where you get like a certain amount. You like you like set your amount for like mm -hmm. this is how many I'll take a a month or whatever. Right, right. I see a lot of other artists do that. Sometimes they'll have um, they usually call them commission slots, I believe, and they'll do yeah. two or three per month, and then they can really focus in and do those. And it all really depends on what a like what your process is for making your art. And how often, how frequently you make your art. I am definitely one of those people that um, I'm not constantly drawing every single day. I definitely have um, a couple of different, like, larger pieces that I focus in on. I do not put out art as frequently as others. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, um, I, I definitely think, like, while you could, like, make, like, sort of, like, work in progress uh, posts, especially... Um, I definitely think that like your end result pieces are like amazing and deserve to be like I'm, I'm glad you spend as much time as you do on them because they do show in the end it's not um, it's not you don't take for it's not that you you take forever on a piece from just and then you just like do it in one day when you finally get inspiration then just like hit send you actually like spend time on them and that's a lot different than what I what I would think in terms of like some people might go ahead and do in terms of making their art and like procrastinating on it mm -hmm. Um and I definitely think that yours definitely shows that, and so that sort of like slot commission, I'd uh, it would be uh, pretty good for that. And get, maybe even getting commissions would help with like getting yourself to practice drawing a lot more, like every like nearly every day, 
especially if there's like a monetary goal at the end of it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, one that that um, yeah, you're so that pretty much covers like how your artistic process really goes. Of like, you take a lot of time in in terms of like the details of your work, and you have multiple. Do you normally have multiple like projects at a time, or do you normally work at them one at a time and get them fully complete before you start working another? Like, what do you do for that? Uh, for me personally, I tend to, I yeah, I tend to finish something before I start anything else. Mm-hmm. Mostly, um, mostly just because I'll kind of focus in on that one idea and I'll just really want to get it done. Okay. I think that I I have that sort of uh, mindset more so than um, more so than kind of moving on from one thing to another very quickly. When I when I have when I find that inspiration and I start a piece, I'm like very interested in taking it all away and getting it to a place where I'm where I feel satisfied with it. Okay, that's that, that, I think that's good because uh, a lot of a lot of different artists have like um, multiple like in progress uh, work works in progress, and when they don't like it, they start another one that they want to go ahead and like get a work on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think that, I, I think that you lot, having yeah. that dedication, you having a lot of like focus dedication is really like important. Um, and I think that would go well with your slot, so your, your slot selection. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Last thing I want to go ahead and, uh, talk about. Um, okay. Do you have anything that you find to be any like major inspirations for your artwork? Like, is there anything you, you've seen and been been like? That's how you gathered like, either whether it be like your inspiration to go ahead and like start another piece, or your inspiration to like something you've noticed and wanted to go ahead and make art about the prog- the the thing, mm-hmm. or even like artists that you've enjoyed and realized like, oh, I can go ahead and work hard like them, like like anything. Tell me about it. In terms of um. In terms of like practical things like objects to draw things like subjects um obviously a lot of um (laughs) a lot of uh, video games kind of drive my inspiration for that of subjects to draw Um, a lot of sci-fi um sometimes something just strikes me and i'm like i i want to draw that (laughs) and so i i go ahead and i do um and a lot of things even that I haven't drawn were still there were there were things that inspired me that I wanted to um draw something like that, like a character or um there's just like a lot of things. It's hard <laughs> it's difficult to put into words because there are a lot of things that inspire me and I'm like, I wanna draw that. Um in terms of like style of things that I see that kind of inspire me to do something differently in my own work, um, just other artists. I I tend to surround myself a lot on social media with a lot of other artists on on Twitter and on Instagram, and um, I think it helps a lot to fuel that um, creativity sometimes. All right. I know that I know that in the in the beginning, um, a long time ago, I used to uh, kind of shy away from that. I was worried that um, seeing a lot of other people's art would like taint my mind. <laughs> and my ideas mm-hmm. wouldn't really be my own, but mm-hmm. that's I don't think that's really the case. Um I you get a lot of inspiration from other artists in uh, things like how to use colors in like a unique way or um kind of sp- uh sparks the fire of um you know what 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 thing you might want to do next. I definitely think there's a lot more like benefit to that than harm especially mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because like I, i've i've had uh speaking of like not not from my own personal experience but from uh one of my friends who um they're a uh they're a musician and they after they listen to like a lot of they listen to a lot of different sounds and what they're worried about is if they make a sound and they realize like oh i just made this uh type of like i just made this type of music that sounds mm-hmm. a lot similar to my interests like well of course you did Mm -hmm. you've made it that way because you've enjoyed that process and you enjoy that kind of music and you want to go ahead and make that as well it's so it's the same idea but you know like like visually yeah exactly all right and i think that's Mm -hmm. definitely a good thing yeah um 
it's, I think it's important to strike a balance between um, to strike a balance between um, your kind of inspiration from others in your own creativity and then just kind of straight up like taking another idea <laughs> I, I definitely I definitely agree there's there's some artists that like directly directly copy uh, different types of art and and I'm not a big fan of that but there's some that take inspiration from the like the genre of, or specific style of art and make it on their own I think that's very I think that's very cool um, a lot of mm -hmm. some of my favorite artists have the have uh, styles inspired by the similar cartoons that I enjoy and a lot of my uh, and some of them are inspired by like different, uh, different like aesthetics that I also enjoy. And there's no shame in like finding that sort of thing that you enjoy and like focusing your craft in that and making it your own. But it's always an issue of like at what point is it like exact like mm -hmm. copying of like I think, like literally writing o literally writing over it. Like that might be an issue, but yeah, everything else. I think else, that's yeah. always a big fear mm -hmm. is that you don't want to like copy because that's <laughs> that. Not only is that shitty, but it just kind of doesn't feel good when you're like, mm -hmm. "Oh shit, am I am I just copying?" <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I think it's good to um to um they put it. It's good to it's good to fuel your creativity and um, mm -hmm. surround yourself with art. Art is beautiful. <laughs> art is awesome. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And that, you know what? With that, I think that's going to... Uh, that's going to that's gonna slightly wrap things up. But before I go ahead and do so, I want to go ahead and see, is there anything you want to go ahead and specifically talk about um, that you want to go ahead and tell everybody who is listening right now? Um... I'll do I'll do all your plugins and stuff. Uh, yeah, but is there any? I'll, I'll do like um, I'm definitely gonna go ahead and shout you out. Don't you Don't you worry about that. But I'd love to go <laughs> and hear some more. I'd love to go and hear some like like anything else that you've like wanted ever since you realized like oh I'm gonna be interviewed from, from I'm gonna be interviewed like what was something you want to go ahead and talk about on this on this podcast? Um, nothing, nothing particularly. At least nothing about myself. Um, just support mm -hmm. artists. Hell yeah. Art, hell yeah! Art is great. <laughs> is another wholesome note. Like, hell support yeah. your uh, support your artists. Um, if you find, yeah, find stuff that you like, you know, find your local artist who is accepting commissions. <laughs> Please go ahead one. and yeah, any any local one, anyone. Anyone on this podcast who is has their commissions open, please go ahead and at least uh, consider them. I'm sure all of them will greatly at least appreciate it. And um, with that being said, uh, you can follow Kay on Twitter at Andromeda underscore snow or on Tumblr at andromeda-snow.tumblr.com. And all the uh, individual links uh, will be in the YouTube video description. And for audio listeners, uh, go ahead and follow him on Twitter at Andromeda underscore snow, like I said before. Very important you go ahead and do so. And, uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Kay, for uh, coming along with this grand journey into the first episode of Commissions Open. Hopefully, I'm going to get things more structured eventually yeah. as, I, as I figure things out. But I think that this has been a great experience. It's and a good... Thank uh, you so much. It's a good uh, first episode, but the yes. second time around. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good first episode, and I enjoy um, that you're going to be the, fir the first uh, guest. Yeah, I, a I lot of my I other set a good example. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I, I definitely think so. I definitely think so. A lot of the other... Um, I'm, I'm only just now realizing the like the pressure. <laughs> oh, don't 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 worry anything. Don't worry example. about it. Don't worry about it. A lot of um, your 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 episode. You may be episode one, but I'm not releasing them all until I get like a good number of interviews set up, right. okay. and then we'll be releasing them in releasing them in order. Hell still, yeah. um, but I've got uh, quite a few lined up. Uh, episode two should hopefully be our good friend uh, that both of us know, Kaya Laura. Um, oh, yeah. She's a wonderful artist and voice actress. And uh, you'll be able to go and hear a lot more about her on the next episode of Commissions Open. Thank you so much for listening.
and have a wonderful evening. Thanks for listening to this episode of Commissions Open. If you would, please follow this podcast on whatever app you use. I would most definitely appreciate it. If you're just listening, that's perfectly fine. However, if you'd like, you can also watch this podcast on YouTube to see a custom commission every episode for each guest I have on, as well as to see the wonderful podcast set. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at commsopenpodcast. That's C-O-M-S Open Podcast on Twitter. Finally, you can follow today's guest, Kay, at Andromeda underscore Snow on Twitter. That's A-N-D-R-O-M-E-D-A underscore Snow on Twitter. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.